who are the villains of Dr. Stone? Considering Tsukasa is only technically a villain, Hyoga is the first true villain in the story. After that, we have Discount Jafar and then the iconic duo of Zeno and Stanley. If you include a Mr. You-Know-Who that we haven't actually met yet, that's six villains in 200-something chapters. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but might seem small compared to other shonen manga that have at least come this far. So in this video, I'd like to discuss the role of villains in Dr. Stone, why there are so few of them, and what this means for the future of the story. Be warned that this video will contain manga spoilers. Before I get started, make sure to comment with your thoughts on villains in Dr. Stone. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment goes to Sam, who encouraged me to surpass even science itself. If you'd like more Dr. Stone and other manga discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. So before I dive into Dr. Stone, I just want to quickly define what it means to be a villain. Because in this day and age of morally gray stories where everyone is murdering and <clears throat> cuddling each other, it can be hard to clearly explain the difference between villains and antagonists. For the purposes of this video, villains are the big bads of their respective arcs, or the main story in the case of Y-Man, and antagonists are anyone else who opposes the hero and their mission. As a straightforward example, Frieza would obviously be the villain of the Frieza saga in Dragon Ball, because while there are many bad guys that are clearly evil, they all work for Frieza and the entire plot is a direct result of Frieza's actions. Now, in the case of Dr. Stone, this is why I like to say that Tsukasa is technically a villain. He tried to kill Senku at least a few times, and many of the events in the first 80 chapters or so are a direct result of his plan to create an empire of power. So, in this sense, he is technically a villain because that is unambiguously his role in the story. But it still feels weird to call Tsukasa a villain because he's clearly not an evil person. Unlike someone like Thanos, who claims to be serving the greater good but squashes people like bugs, Tsukasa is an extremely compassionate person, only kills when he believes it's absolutely necessary, and even remembers every person he killed or that died in his service. The reason I bring this up is because one could reasonably argue that Tsukasa isn't even a villain based on all of his good qualities. But while there is a lot of merit to that argument, it all comes down to the fact that Tsukasa was undeniably a major threat to Senku and directly influenced many of the events in the first few parts of the story. And this brings us to why villains are especially important in Dr. Stone. In general, villains are created to pose a threat to the hero and to create tension and conflict in the story. Otherwise, the story gets boring and we just don't care after a certain point. Remember when Peter Griffin shot the movie with his tank because it didn't have any conflict? Kind of like that. Now, in Dr. Stone, villains are even more important because there would basically be no tension at all without them. Think about it, if you take away the villains, the only real tension in the story is Senku's race to cure Ruri before it's too late, and then just general issues that come up when the team is doing their science thing. Without the villains, Dr. Stone would just be one big game of Minecraft where you almost never run into any mobs which might be fun for an hour or so, but after a while that'll get pretty boring and you'll just decide it's not worth your investment. And if you look at every arc where a new villain is introduced, this special need for villains only becomes more obvious. Without Tsukasa, there wouldn't be any need to fight over the Miracle Cave. Without Abara and Zeno, Senku would waltz right onto Treasure Island and Corn City, find whatever he needs, and the arcs would only be like 10 chapters long. So clearly the villains are especially important in Dr. Stone. Despite that, they're introduced very sparingly. Again, 80 odd something chapters of Dr. Stone and at that point we only had Tsukasa and Hyoga. 120 chapters later and we only have three more villains besides Y-Man. Which, like I said earlier, isn't really that short a list. But certainly seems small compared to other manga that introduce new villains in almost every arc. And there's actually a few reasons why villains are introduced so sparingly in Dr. Stone. The first reason is because Dr. Stone focuses heavily on personal struggles, which is actually supported by an interview with Inagaki that I'll link down below. Now, in the interview, when asked if Dr. Stone will follow a man versus nature type conflict, Inagaki explicitly mentions that Dr. Stone will not be man versus nature or man versus science because nature and science are the friends of man. 
which as he admits is a pretty cool one-liner, but also helps us understand how Dr. Stone develops conflict. While there are antagonistic characters and nature itself can also be antagonistic, a lot of the plot in Dr. Stone revolves around the inner struggles of the characters. Senku's struggle to go beyond his limits for the sake of others, Suika's struggle to be reliable, Ginro's struggle to do literally anything. Almost all of the morals and themes in Dr. Stone are derived from how the characters deal with adversity and not necessarily conflicts with other characters. In other words, Dr. Stone doesn't rely on conflicts with villains or antagonists to flesh out the characters. The villains are only introduced to help create the tension that forces the characters to overcome adversity. Which brings us to the second reason why villains are used so sparingly. Because Dr. Stone focuses more on problem solving and less on defeating other characters, it's only when there's no foreseeable problem solving to be done that Inagaki uses villains to create tension. A great example of this is the Ishigami Village Saga. Inventing sulfa medicine was a big process with a ton of problem solving. So it makes sense why the closest thing we got to an antagonist is magma. And I'm sure all the Gen and magma shippers out there are glad he didn't stay that way. Some of you might be wondering if that's really a thing, but oh boy, is it a thing. Anyway, if there's no reason to expect any tension or problem solving, like when the team just needed to find corn, or when Senku and Tsukasa were suddenly besties again, you can bet your bottom dollar that someone's getting sniped at or stabbed in the chest. Finally, the third and most straightforward reason is because of Dr. Stone's emphasis on the idea that people are power. Time and time again, we've seen discussions in the story about how desire is noble and that the characters can work together despite their differences. Which is only supported by the fact that all the villains are eventually redeemed after being defeated. Except for poor Ibarra who got turned to stone and immediately became irrelevant. Big F in the chat for any Ibarra fans. Point being that in a story where all the characters have some sort of redeeming quality, it makes sense that only a few of the characters are so malicious, or to use the words of Mr. Zeno Houston Wingfield, so elegantly evil, that they need to be stopped. So those are the three reasons why villains are introduced so sparingly in Dr. Stone. The story is more concerned with personal struggles, they're only meant to supplement or enhance the problem solving, and the themes and tone make it difficult to introduce lots of truly evil characters. Now that we've explored the role of villains in the story so far, I'd like to end the video by discussing what we can expect from villains in the future. At least right now, we probably won't be getting a new villain anytime soon, considering Senku's team has just decided to build a computer. And when you have a quote from the boy genius himself saying that it's gonna be hell, then it's likely going to involve a fair bit of problem solving. So at least until the computer is done, you can expect this arc to play out a lot like the Ishigami Village arc with the potential for a new antagonist like Magma to shake things up. Aside from that, it's hard to say what comes next. I mean, we've already got jet engines and the team is banging out what is probably the biggest piece of the puzzle. So I can't imagine too much more problem solving at the level of sulfa drugs or computers in the foreseeable future. In fact, the next two cities are rubber and aluminum, which should be pretty straightforward. And like I said earlier, since it looks like smooth sailing after computers, we can probably expect a new villain that's guarding all those precious resources. In terms of what this new villain will be like, well, Saxie and I are still banking on Y-Man's army of beaver warriors, and I have my own little pet theory that Y-Man has allies or hired mercenaries on Earth, but let me know what you think in the comments. For now, I can at least tell you what we won't be getting. Considering that the characters all have some redeeming quality, I would be shocked if we got some political or religious figure with a really polarizing philosophy. Senku isn't someone to chime in on religious issues, and the most political character we've seen is Tsukasa, who really wasn't even that political. I could see a capitalist villain that leads to a conversation with Ryusui about how greed isn't necessarily a good or bad thing, but that's about it. Now, there are a couple more things that are also worth mentioning. First, Y-Man has slowly been playing more of an active role in the story, so we could see him, or them, take a proactive approach in order to create some tension. Second, we can't forget that after the recent petrification, there was a mysterious light above the radio tower. 
who or what caused this to happen, I can't say for sure, but it's certainly possible that a new villain is waiting for Senku in Ishigami Village. All I can say for sure is that, like Stanley, Zeno, and all the other great characters we've met, any new villain we encounter will only help elevate the already incredible story of Dr. Stone. And that's it for this discussion. If you enjoyed this discussion, then make sure to like the video. Also make sure to follow me on Twitch, where I discuss Dr. Stone and other Shonen Jump manga every Sunday. And if you'd like more Dr. Stone and other manga discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.